And so I am um, recapping what we did. Uh, basically, when we left off before the last video that got super messy, um, this is all we had. We had our box B rep that um, gave us the intersection curves along each of the edges. So from that, I decided I'm going to analyze the lengths of those surfaces and flatten the list so that I get a list of the length numbers. Um, then under sets list, I can sort that list so that what I get is a list that reads numerically in order. <clears throat> okay, so that's the simple first part. But then we realized that in the um, next section here at the bottom of this, we can um, sort all of the surfaces using the same logical reordering system and structure that we use to reorder the length numbers. So all you have to do is plug in the faces into the A. <clears throat> and my test, because when I hover over that, my test is to measure the area which is going to be proportional to the length of each of these faces. Um, I'm testing my area against the reordering. So I have to go to surface analysis area. And then test it with another panel. Which when I read it, I can see that all of the 16 numbers are in numerical order as well. <clears throat> that is the simple form of what we just did. And that one only took two and a half minutes, not 23. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's move on quickly to what we're going to do with this information. So <clears throat> I know that I've got some that are very, very long and some that are very small. Uh, we're not going to be able to break it down, or at least I'm not going to try to break it down into extremely small sets right now. I'm probably just going to do three and see how it looks throughout the building. Um, so what I'm going to use, and I think this is the right one, is sublist. Bounds. Do I need bounds? I'll find out. So sublist is going to require the list and then the domain and then uh, remap indices that overshoot list, list domain. I wouldn't worry about that. Division has a base domain and a number of segments. And it gives us division segments. OK, so why is that significant? Right, so it has a base domain, 0 to 1. And then it has division segments, which is 10. And then right here, it's telling you that there are 10 different segments, and it's cutting it up into 10 equal groups. So why is that good for us? We can subcategorize. Well, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Uh, essentially. <coughs> but... Well, you could divide it technically by anything you want, right? All I have to do is change the number of segments, and it'll break it down into domains that are equivalent to that segment. Yep. So let's take a look at this boundary that I've pulled out, okay? So this is the end result. We want a list that is broken down into groups, 
but this list requires um, domain indices. And so this is going to give us domain segments, which I think will translate perfectly fine. Let's find out. So I flattened that list, and I got a full list of numbers. And I can measure the minimum and maximum values to give me a base domain. Let's plug that in and take a look. So now my I input says uh, the value is now 24 to 249. And here are those 10 subdivisions, 24 to 47, 47 to 69, so on and so forth. That are, that are all 10 equal subdivisions of those domain minimum maximums. Now, if I drop in a panel and I change the subdivision count to three, now I only have three different groups. Okay, so these are, you're probably still trying to find these, so it's under um, math domain. And this is under divide domain. So or it's math domain, but also it's called divide domain. So. <coughs> I think for these, I'm going to give you the icons. It'll probably be easier for you. OK. So now let's test this out and see if it's going to give us the right groupings that we're looking for. OK, so it, it needs a list a list of information to split. Then it also needs domain indices to break it down by. So um, the list is going to be, we'll probably have to do this twice for both the surfaces and the numbers. But let's start with the numbers. So I'll move these up. Okay, so the numbers here, I'm going to feed into that. And I'll plug in the domain like that. And I'll copy this panel down to test it. So that's actually looking pretty good. Plug the panel in. I'll look at our numbers. Oh, interesting. I typed it in. It's a panel. This is just a big panel. If you drop one in and you double click it, you can type inside. Right, but it's, uh, like I have that exact same thing, but it's uh, my uh, division or whatever, division domain, it popped up red. I'll come take a look at it. <coughs> hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So maybe that's not what I want. So let's try a different type of um, subdivision. So we tried, what is this one? Sublist. Extract. A subset from a list. Maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we do want to use partition list. Now we're kind of going back. <laughs> uh, all right, maybe that wasn't so useless after all. Let me group this, pull it down to the side. So once I get stuck, guys, you'll notice I tend to just group something and shove it off to the side and troubleshoot it later, it might come back into play. So that's why I do that. So I'm going to try partitioning the list again, but now that it's in order, it should be easier to partition. So I'll take the same 16 um, numbers, 
and then I will do the same mathematical relationship. So I'm going to do an operator that uh, divides based on the set list length. So list length is going to be the number that goes in the uh, top. And then um, a panel is where I'm going to say how many I want to divide it by. So I'm going to divide it by 4. Plug that in. All right, so that's what I was looking for. I don't know what the other one did, but <clears throat> so this is all we did here. Um, we went under set list, and we used a partition list, which we created a mathematical division for. So this is. math operators. And that's all coming off of K. <clears throat> so recapping that real fast, right? Now we're, we're trying to break it up into groups that we're then going to isolate and modify. So um, we have four of our smallest surfaces, then we have four of our second to smallest surfaces, so on and so forth, measured horizontally across. So now the easy part here is we can do the same thing as a group. I'm going to simplify this list. I actually, I'm just going to delete it. So this is one grouped family that I'm working with. And I can copy that down and then feed the surfaces in instead. And now I've got lists of um, so uh, groups of the lengths, and I have groups of the surfaces, and this is all analytical right now, so the areas in matching order. So I'm going to stop for a second, guys, and ask you, how confused are you about that? OK, we didn't do too much, right? So just like we did up here, these top two, top two panels right there and there, that is your raw data that you've reor reordered to be sequential. We use this little mathematical block that you're seeing right here. <coughs> And it's the same in both cases um, to break down both your uh, lengths and your surfaces into groups that match each other. And if you want another degree of security here to make sure that's true, you can map both of them to the same divisor. So that plugs in there, and this plugs in here. All right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I dropped this in again so that I could get the information so I, so I can just show you what's happening. Otherwise, it's just going to give me a list that says surface, 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 surface. And you can't tell that they're in the right order. Is any of this information flattened? No. Uh, no. So it's when you. No, it won't give you whole numbers. Flattening the list will give you uh, this. So this is an example of a flattened list. It's every single item that exists in the list in one set of index values. When you graft it, or in this case partition it, which is doing the same thing, it subdivides that list into sets. So flattening it would just return it back to being this. And I could show you very easily by taking this and flattening it.
same thing. Uh, yeah, well, mm, yes, yeah, they both are. Was there another question? Yeah, um, say you have like a square and you divide it into four groups, but they're all the same size, like. Um, a square would give you the same result, yeah. Yeah, if, if you have a square, then every single one of those things is going to be the same. It's, that's a difficult one to analyze. Are you working with a square right now? No, I'm just, I'm just saying where like a, a problem can be with that. You know? Well, yeah. I mean, it would be a problem. That's why I chose, that's why I chose a geometry that's actually pretty varied. has a bunch of small ones and a bunch of big ones. And more particularly, a bunch of small ones that are not in the same place um, as other small ones. Um, because then you, know, you won't run into an anomaly like that where everything shows up the same or even accidentally, all my small ones show up at the top of my list by accident, you know? So I always try to test, I try to test these things on more complex geometry. Any other questions? Yeah. Is there a way to find information <coughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so the question was, is there a resource that's going to go through the definition of something if you, for instance, um, what if you don't know what, you know, a list is or something like that? That's super basic, but let me drop in something more complex and maybe you'll understand. Like what is a specular, right? Um, even I've never even used that, so I don't even really know. But um, under, if you go to the website for the class, paramark.com, you can go to resources, and uh, the Grasshopper Primer is pretty good at giving you everything you need to know to get that kind of knowledge and get off the ground. So it might take a moment to. Can I just sprint right past? <clears throat> I guess I have to download it. Might be worth downloading. <coughs> I don't want to do that. I have it at home. But anyway, um, the the grasshopper primer is really great. Uh, it was actually this one is not authored by Mode Lab, but um, I think it isn't. I think it's actually developed by the people who made Grasshopper, so it it should be a pretty good pretty good way of doing it. Uh, another thing to just be aware of is that, and right now it's pretty short, Digital Toolbox, Grasshopper Primer, Dropbox, YouTube. Um, but there are a bunch of kind of companies out there that have, um, you know, services that you can do where you can actually run through, like, tutorials and stuff to learn. This one used to be more useful than it is now. But anyway, just throwing that out there. If you need help on a particular thing, I can help you find out where to get the knowledge. All right, I'm going to stop that video then. Oops.